I was born in Odessa, Ukraine, um, and I was born to a family that was well influenced by art, music, sports. Uh, my father was a really well-known gymnast. Uh, he was in the Olympics in the 80s, and his father was a really famous sprinter. Um, so my dad's side is very athletic. And then on my mom's side, um, her father was a composer, musician. And um, she used to dance and act and sing, uh, so very artistic, I would say, side. So when I was little, like, they kept trying to figure out what to do with me, which direction, you know, I should go or what I should do. So they decided to start me off with rhythmic gymnastics. Since my father was already in the gymnastics world, it would be easier. And at the age of four, I joined uh, a school for rhythmic gymnastics um, that was an Olympic reserve school. So it was very, very intense training, basically to um, prepare Olympic athletes for the future. So it was very hardcore. I started at the age of four. Um, and for a four-year-old, the schedule was very extreme. Um, and with that, we had ballet class that was required uh, an hour a day. And that was sort of my first introduction into ballet at that time and to kind of like get an experience and see what it was like. But I truly fell in love with it when my mom took me to a performance of Sleeping Beauty, also at the age of four. And I, I was able to watch backstage on the wings with my mom. And I just stood and I watched Hypnotized for hours and I wouldn't even sit down because I was just so in awe of the lights and the music and the costume that I just immediately fell in love with it. It was just such a magical world to me, especially as a four-year-old, uh, to see something so beautiful. And it was almost like a fairy tale coming to life. And it was just like another world that I fell in love with and that I, you can kind of escape to and become someone else, you know, to have that opportunity to actually live someone else's life and see, you know, uh, what other character or role you can become and, you know, to experiment with that. So I think that was sort of what I really fell in love with. I would say I was about seven and we immigrated to the States to Philadelphia. My grandfather had come over 10 years before us. Uh, so he brought us over. We came to him. <laughs> and so we came straight to Philadelphia. And at the age of eight is when my mom enrolled me into the Rock School of Pennsylvania Ballet in Center City, Philly. When I started training, there was a really, really great school. And uh, they worked, they were together with the Pennsylvania Ballet, which gave a lot of students an opportunity to dance with a real company and in a real theater, a big, beautiful theater. Now they're not together anymore, they split. <laughs> but at the time, it was really amazing. And the teachers and the training were so good. Um, it was both, they had both Russian training and Balanchine. So I sort of got the best of both worlds, and um, which has been tremendously helpful in my career, um, getting to do Balanchine works. I sort of have an understanding for it, and it, you know, it was it came easier to me than not having done it at all. I performed the lead role of Clara. I think I was 11 or 12 my first year, and then they kept me in that same role for the next for I did it for three years straight. And that is sort of, I think, when I truly fell in love with ballet, um, getting that real stage experience with a company and seeing what a real performance feels like and what it's like to dance in a theater with like thousands of people watching. I, I just instantly was hooked. I was the youngest um, recipient of the Princess Grace Awards. And um, I mean, I was just so thrilled and so honored to have been even like that, that my, the directors of my school wanted, you know, to use me for this award uh, to nominate me. And the fact that I received it was just, I couldn't even imagine receiving it because people said that it's so hard to get, like, you, you know, most people don't get this award. It's really difficult. And the fact that I got it was just, amazing for me. It was a big breakthrough, I think, and a boost in my confidence, I think, um, knowing that I was a good enough dancer and allow me to keep doing what I'm doing.
my mom actually was a, a huge, huge supporter in my career. And when she saw that I truly loved ballet and that this was what I wanted to do um, seriously, she pretty much did everything in her power to, to try to help me to make it happen, to make it a dream of mine. Um, and she found all these amazing, I don't know how she found these incredible teachers and ballet masters from, from Russia, from the Marinsky, from all these different places. And she got me the training with them. I had a lot of private training with a few different ballet masters and mistresses. And it really expanded my dancing ability and the way I moved. And I, it really crafted me into the dancer I am today. Right before then, I, I did uh, two major international ballet competitions. Um, I won a gold medal at Moscow International Ballet Competition, which was um, a really, really intense and hard competition. And I actually went to that comp competition not thinking of winning. I just kind of wanted to go for the experience and just to see what other kind of dancers are out there in the world and where I stand and what I need to work on. So I really did not expect to win. You know, I was just doing it for the experience and, um, but it, I somehow, I, I ended up winning. I somehow, I danced all my variations and my contemporary pieces super well. And I, I won the gold medal which was really amazing. I'll never forget that experience. And right after that is when I went and I auditioned for ABT. And they just happened to be um, in their spring season at the Metropolitan Opera House at Lincoln Center. So I took class with the company and the director, ballet mistresses, masters came to watch. And right after that class is when they told me that they would accept me into a studio company. I've wanted to join American Ballet Theater ever since I was probably 11 years old. And the reason why is I had all these DVDs of American Ballet Theater with um, Bershnikov, Makarova, Fernando Bujanes, all these amazing dancers. And I have watched them over and over and over again throughout my whole life of, <laughs> as I was training. And I wanted to be just like them and dance in the theater where they danced and did what they did. So that was always a dream of mine since I was little. It was very challenging, actually, my first years in the company, um, going from dancing like lead roles and lead variations um, to going to the core and just standing in line and not really getting to dance was very tough. Uh, but I think it made me into a stronger person, into, you know, it really, really made me tough and really taught me to not give up and to continue to work hard. And if I work hard enough, you know, things will work out and wish they did. And so, but I don't regret being in the core for all those years. I feel like it only made me a better person and it only made me understand um, what it's like to work in a group and how hard that actually is because not many people think being in the core is hard but it's extremely difficult it's very very difficult so i sort of am super grateful and so thankful for going through all of these ranks and having gained all of that experience while i was in the core i still on my days off i would still go back to my teacher in philadelphia and i would continue to work on those solo roles and the principal roles just to keep them in my body for if ever the time came, I would be prepared. And I'm so grateful that I did do that because when I did get the soloists and the principal parts, it was much easier for me because I've already rehearsed them. They were already familiar to me. It wasn't as challenging or hard. So I felt um, really at ease going into those roles. I've never sort of just sat still and done nothing. I've always tried to do more and more and more if I had the time to continue to grow and to progress and to get better. Um, as a person and a dancer, I feel like it's very important to continue to learn new things. Um, it just makes you a more interesting, better person. So yeah. It was our spring season, which is one of our hardest seasons. Um, we go for like two months straight, um, switch ballets every week. 
there's like eight shows a week and it's a very intense period. And what happened was a lot of the principal ballerinas at that time, I was a soloist. So a lot of principal ballerinas at that time got injured or were hurt and they didn't have enough people to dance some of the ballets. So I ended up going in to Corsair with like three days notice to dance the lead role. I haven't rehearsed it. I haven't learned it. I wasn't even on the basic. They had to teach the ballet to me in three days. And then I had three shows of it that, ne that next week. So right after that, after the season, after, you know, doing all those extra shows um, is when I got promoted. And um, Kevin McKenzie told me to come into his office and he told me that I, he was going to promote me to a principal. And that, I mean, that was my whole goal, and you know, since I was little. So I could not be happier. I have to say it's quite busy. And um, now as a principal dancer, I approach these ballets quite differently because to me, they're not about just doing the steps right anymore or dancing clean. But to me, it's more about the artistry and about the storytelling. And I've really, really like fallen in love with the storytelling process and finding the character and making sure that the audience understands the character and its story. And I've been really focused on that in all the ballets I've been doing so far. And I love it. It's so interesting to me now. In the beginning, I sort of just try to put the choreography together and to like set my version to remember how I did what and if I want to change anything. And once I set that and feel comfortable with it, then I go and I try to analyze the character and the story and then apply that artistry and the storytelling to those steps. And then, so towards the end, before the performances would begin, I say I work more on the artistry and the personality of the character. A favorite role is definitely Swan Lake. And I love that ballet so much. And that ballet, it's just a never ending process. There's so much work. There's constant perfecting constant like there's so much you can do with it it's just it never ends but it's such a beautiful beautiful ballet and the music is amazing and the dual personality and the, there's so much to do with it I, I absolutely love it I actually really love it because it's sort of I recently this past fall we I got the chance to work with Twyla Farp and she created a new piece on ABT and it's really amazing working with her because she sort of gives you a couple steps, but then she sort of allows you the freedom to mess around with them or to add more or to do whatever you want to make it your own. So it's a really interesting process. And um, I love when new works are created on me because you can add so much of yourself to it. And it's much more comfortable, I would say, because you make it your own and the movement is more fluid because it's coming from your own body and you know your own actions. I would say one of the really special moments in my career is when I got to go to the Marinsky and, and rehearse there. And I was able to do that because um, ABT awarded me a grant, um, the Annenberg grant, and um, it's basically a sum of money that the dancer receives and you can do whatever you wish with this money as long as it's, um, you know, career re related or anything like that. And my dream has always been to go to the Marinsky in St. Petersburg. And it's just such an amazing theater and filled with so much history. Um, and it's so hard to get into. But with that grant, I was able to go there and to actually take class with the company and to rehearse. And that has definitely been one of the most amazing moments in my life. Since I was little, um, what really made me want to dance is sort of the joy that it brought to the people that come to watch the ballet. And I'm such a people pleaser. I love making people happy and getting people gifts. I'm just, that's just the kind of person that I am. So anything that makes people happy makes me happy. And I sort of fell in love with dance because it just brought joy and happiness to everyone that came and watched me. And 
um, it really makes me feel good inside when, you know, people leave the show satisfied and, you know, filled with joy. As soon as I get on stage and after I do a couple of steps, I sort of just instantly go into the role. And I usually don't like distract I don't think about anything else other than the role itself or the person that I have to be so I try to like really um go deep inside and just become someone else so I'm not ever really thinking about what's going on out there or what's around me I'm totally just like in another world my ballet inspirations have always been all these really old, older generation ballerinas. And I've watched, I still have at home, all these VHS tapes. They're black and white VHS tapes of all these beautiful, beautiful old generation ballerinas. And I grew up watching them and still watch them. And they're still, it's still so amazing what they did back then. And, and back then it was sort of, it was more artistic than it was technically challenging like today. And the personalities that they brought to the characters back then was just so amazing. It was so impactful and it was wonderful. I have a premiere coming up this spring and I will be debuting Giselle, which um, has been a role that I've always wanted to do. It's probably one of my favorite roles of all the ballets. And um, I finally get to do it this spring. So I'm I'm in preparation right now for that ballet, which is super exciting. Um, so that's new, and I'm also premiering theme and variations. With ABT, or with most companies, I mean, you're constantly rehearsing different things at, in the same day. So you're constantly going from like contemporary to classical to like Balanchine. So, so I'm pretty used to um, adjusting to different um, styles of dance quickly. Um, but theme and variations is quite, it's very fast paced, very quick. And, um, I'm lucky that I had some balancing training, uh, when I was a student. So it comes pretty easy to me, which is great. But, um, yeah, it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. Now I'm slowly getting all the ballets that I've wanted to dance, um, and, my real goal would be to sort of guess worldwide with um, all these big companies in Russia or London or Paris. That's sort of one of my big goals. So I would love to guest internationally with other companies and dance with other companies. Um, but at the moment, um, this is my third year as a principal, so I'm still sort of new and I'm still sort of picking up all the ballets and the roles. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot to do for me right now, a lot of work. Being a principal, I definitely learned that um, there's a lot of quick, you don't really have much time in between ballets and you're constantly preparing so many different ballets and the roles are so big and there's so much to do and not much time. So you sort of have to adjust to not having as much time as you want to prepare these roles and possibly working on them throughout the year, like a little bit here and a little bit there, so that when the ballets come, you're pretty much ready to dance them. That's sort of been what I've been getting used to as a principal, because I thought when you become a principal, you have all the time in the world to prepare a ballet, and you know, you'll, you'll feel ready and good, but that's, that's totally not true. Literally, sometimes we only have five or four days to put together a full-length ballet, so you just have to prepare ahead of time for everything. Throughout the year, um, I'll work with my teacher and I'll prepare it ahead of time so that, you know, half of it's already pretty much done when I go and begin the process. Body recovery to me is super important. And um, as a professional dancer, your body is, is everything. Like you can't, your job is your body. So you have to take really good care of yourself. And I really like, I do everything I can. Like every night after rehearsal, I'll, I always take Epsom salt baths. Um, they really help me a lot to recover my muscles. Um, I'll do cryotherapy. Instead of sitting in a nice bath, which is just <laughs> brutal, it's basically you go into a room for three minutes. That's very cold. It's sort of like an ice bath, but it's dry air. 
and it's three minutes of icing and dry air and it's amazing after a long day of rehearsal it really helps with muscle soreness or aches pains circulation like everything so i do that as often as i can um, infrared saunas are so great um, i also do them when i can and um yeah, massage is important. I have to, I do massage like once a week. It's really important because if you can take care of your body and your body's healthy, you can dance for a much longer time. Luckily, I've only had one injury and um, I had a, a pretty bad ankle sprain. It was when I, it was my first year in studio company actually with American Ballet Theater. And that was pretty tough getting injured in the first year of being in studio company because it's like when you're trying to show yourself to have everyone see you and um, like you and I happened to get injured four months into that time and I had a high ankle sprain I was out for about three to four months and during that time I mean it was very hard for me because I've never been injured before in my life before then so just to sit still and do nothing for me was so challenging. It was really hard and it was very sad and depressing, but it's fine. I, I overcame it and I only came out stronger. So, and after that injury is, I think when I seriously started to take care of my body really well and to do everything I can um, to eat healthy, to take vitamins, um, to take care of my muscles, to make sure I don't get an injury again. And I've sort of been very persistent with that. I love being outside. Like I love being in nature or going to the water somewhere. I find it very rejuvenating and relaxing. Um, I also, I love cooking and baking. That's like one of my favorite things to do um, because I think it, there's something artistic about it that I really truly love and um, it makes me really happy. Also relaxes me like mentally. It takes my mind off of work and I just, I, baking is probably my favorite thing, but um, I love doing that. Um, so yeah, that's probably the thing I usually <laughs> go to. When I was little and I, of course I didn't have cryotherapy or any of that stuff. Like after rehearsal, after class, I would always, Definitely baths are just so good for your muscles. Epsom salt baths are so easy to do. They're so great for your muscles. But what I would do is I would come home and I would just stretch after a rehearsal. And I would just watch TV and I would stretch as I watch TV. And I feel like after rehearsal, when everything is really tight, stretching is super important and just rolling, rolling out your muscles. Um, anything like that is really wonderful. And then of course, eating very healthy is super important too. getting all the nutrients you need because dancing is just so rigorous and so hard and you sweat out everything every day and you need to replenish your body. So it's very important to eat healthy. When I was in school and rehearsing and um, practicing, like things would like, my body would hurt. Like sometimes my ankles would swell because like all, all these strains and like muscle tears that again, you don't, aren't that noticeable, but they exist. And I would have a lot of pains in my ankle or my muscles or like, but you know, the thing is, is a lot of people sort of when something really hurts, they get scared and then they give up and don't do anything. And I sort of just continued to push through that in however way I could that didn't make it worse but I didn't just stop and do nothing I continued to do what I could do you know when I was hurting so originally for me it started with Burisnikov and Makarova and just because they came from the Marinsky and they came to American Ballet Theater and it just became this big worldwide um, amazing company but mostly I wanted to join ABT mostly because of their vast repertoire and they do all the full length classical ballets as well as contemporary, but mostly they do a lot of the classical ballets, which is what I really wanted to do. And since I was little, I wanted to dance all the full length classical ballets and ABT did that. So that is sort of why I was just so drawn to them and that company. Swan Lake is coming up, Giselle is coming up. Um, theme and variation 
Options is a new thing I'll be doing. Uh, Sleeping Beauty's coming up, Romeo and Juliet. Um, Ratmansky, Alexi Ratmansky, our resident choreographer, uh, just set um, a new ballet, a new full length ballet. It's called Of Love and Rage. That's pretty much what we're premiering out here uh, next week. So that's really exciting. It's pretty an amazing big ballet. Um, so also looking forward to that. And there's just so much more and a lot of contemporary rep as well will be dancing. My whole thing in life is, you know, I truly found what I love to do and I love dance so much and I just could not picture myself doing anything else because of the love and passion I had for it. And I just literally gave everything I had to make that a reality and to, you know, accomplish that dream of becoming a principal ballerina. And I feel like whenever you put your mind to something you truly love, anything is possible. You can accomplish anything. And of course, there's going to be good and bad days and setbacks and things like that. But if you keep fighting for your dream and keep striving to whatever goal you want to achieve, it will happen. It will happen through with all the hard work that you put into it, you will get rewarded.